Good morning, church. We're so glad you could be here with us this morning. As you can see, we've had to make more adjustments um, due to the latest health mandates, and we want to follow um, the laws of the land just like Christ told us to. Uh, so I hope that you are um, enjoying this morning's service in the comfort of your home with your family, if you have any with you in your home. And if not, I hope that you are connecting with uh, our church family online. Be sure to comment below that you're here. And if you have any prayer requests that you would like us to know about and have our church praying for, please be sure to either write it below in the comment section on either Facebook or YouTube, whichever, whichever platform you're watching from. Or you can always private message us through Facebook, and you can also email the church or call the church during normal business hours. Um, I believe someone is at least checking you messages just to make sure that we are connecting if there isn't someone here in person during the week. We want to make sure that you're safe. Be sure that you're just connecting with us and let us know that all is good. Um, so with that, let's just go ahead and pray this morning. Um, and then we will begin our worship. Father, I thank you for this time, Lord, that even in the midst of our ever-changing climate right now of this virus and how we're having to adapt and um, conform to different mandates almost on a daily basis, Lord, I, I thank you that you are still in control. I just pray that you would be with us let us feel your presence right where we are, Lord, because you have gone before us and that you are with us and that you know that, or that we know that you are in control in all things. So Lord, bless this service and bless your people. In Jesus' name, amen.
song a few weeks ago uh, when we were all gathering together in one place. Um, and it's so important to remember that Jesus is the way maker, the miracle worker, the promise keeper, and the light in our darkness. So, wherever you are, I just want to encourage you to sing along with me. Worship the Lord however you feel comfortable. But let this be a prayer from your heart.
Church, uh, let's gather today uh, to worship the Lord through our prayer and uh, come together as you are in the living room or wherever you are. Um, let's focus on the Lord today and uh, I just want to encourage you to kind of pray this uh, prayer in Psalm 91 and this is what it says that whoever dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say to the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God whom I trust. And during these days, uh, friends, let's keep trusting the Lord. Let's keep depending on Him. I think God is doing amazing things uh, in our hearts and in our minds. And as we worship Him today in prayer, uh, let's focus on Him and just know that He is with you. Let's bow our heads today and give thanks to him. Father in heaven, we are so grateful, O oh God, for your goodness to us. We thank you, Father, for being with us uh, throughout these days as uh, we face this uncertainty. We face uh, in our state and in our country a lot of unrest of God. And uh, today I just want to pray and we together want to pray, O oh God, for each soul and each life that has been affected, O oh Father God. In midst of all these things, God, we pray that you will bring your confidence in us, that you will give us your peace that comes from you, O oh God. And we just want to commit ourselves into your hand, O oh God. It is, um, it is uh, we want to confess, O oh Father, that these are not easy days for every one of us our families, our children, uh, our grandparents, the elderly, and um, many are suffering, oh Father God, and we just want to commit them into your hand. Father, today we want to also bring um, our first responders, oh God, the people who are working in the hospitals, the doctors and the nurses, oh God, we pray that you will put your hand of protection upon them. Oh, Father, help them to trust in you, oh God, as they work, oh Father, as they care for people, protect them from, from this virus, oh Father God. We also pray for our leaders uh, in our country, in our state, oh God, that you will uh, give them your wisdom and, oh Father, your guidance, that they will be able to make right decisions as they go, go along with this crisis, as they uh, fight this crisis, oh Father God. Uh, we just want to place ourselves, O oh God, before you. And O oh God, as we also worship you through the reading of your word and through meditating upon your word, O oh God, through the prayer uh, in our homes and wherever we are as a church, O oh Father, we also worship you, O oh God, through the giving of our tithes and our offering. And as we, uh, as we worship you, we, though we do not have a way to kind of do that, O oh Father, but you know our hearts and you know the joy that we receive when we give you, O oh Father. And so uh, receive our, our worship to you. And O oh God, uh, just lead us and guide us. In Jesus' precious name, we pray. Amen and amen. Oh, 
morning, church. We're glad that you're uh, listening this morning and tuning in from wherever you are. Um, today, um, we're in the season of Lent. Uh, we're continuing in the season of Lent. And believe it or not, Easter is just a week away. It's hard to believe. Um, not being in church like normal, um, the season of Lent has really flown by. But we're still in it. And this week is the Sunday before Easter, and we call that Palm Sunday. Palm Sunday is when Jesus was riding in Jerusalem on a donkey and people were praising his name and celebrating him. And even in the midst of the celebration, though, Jesus was very focused on his purpose. He was focused on the cross. He didn't lose sight of what was going on. So Jesus didn't get caught up in the moment of Palm Sunday. He never loses sight of what's coming. And before Easter is the cross. And we can't have Easter without the cross. So Jesus is in this journey to the cross. And so today we're going to kind of go into that journey with him. In this season of Lent, we're going to continue to examine what the life of Jesus looks like. And this week leading up to Easter, Jesus is confronted with all kinds of disappointments, with his disciples leaving him. Um, or betraying him at different points along the way, um, people hurling insults at him. Of course, Jesus died the most brutal death imaginable. In the, we've been talking about offenses, and in this week leading up to Easter, Jesus is faced again and again with all kinds of offenses that people are throwing upon him. And yet Jesus remains steady. Jesus is rock solid during all of this. Um, that's who Jesus is. He continues to move with the love and the grace of God, even when insults are thrown at him. You know, these past few weeks, we've talked about the life of Jesus during this Lent season. We talked about Joseph found in the Old Testament. And last week, if you were joining with us online, we also talked about the life of David, King David in the Old Testament. Um, this week, we're going to focus on another character called Peter. Peter is one of Jesus' disciples. And I invite you to just focus in your attention today. As we look at the life of Peter, there's this encounter that Jesus has with Peter where he says, uh, on this rock, I will build my church. So we're going to look into that today. What does that mean? What is Jesus talking about when he brings this up? But we know that in these past few weeks, as we've looked at the life of Jesus, the life of Joseph and David, we've been able to see that in the midst of offense, in the midst of being mistreated, that they remain stable, that they remain strong, not in their own strength, but in the strength that God gave them. So I encourage you and I invite you um, to just come in and listen uh, for the rest of the sermon today and really listen to what God may be teaching us, each one of us today as we go on. You know, we have been looking at uh, lives of different people during this last three, four weeks. And of course, we focused on Jesus all along the way and uh, uh, life of David and Joseph and as we looked at uh, all these people, we find that they are very firm, solid people, especially in the midst of difficulties and trials and persecution. And um, they're very stable, but um, at the same time, the uh, Bible also talks about people who act hastily. Uh, they are very easily swayed. and. Uh, especially in, in, in midst of persecution or trial or when the storm comes, uh, you know, they crumble down. And um, it is like, um, uh, you know, house built on the sand uh, that when the storm comes, it just kind of, uh, you know, uh, breaks down. And as versus a uh, house that is built on, on the rock, which is solid. And, and that relates to us as a human being. And... Talking about that, uh, Jesus refers uh, Peter, as we are looking at his life today, is uh, as, as the rock. And he says that, uh, I will build my church on this rock, Peter. And uh, the question really is, um, uh, today is, how does uh, 
how God is building his church. And, uh, you know, as we kind of think about that, uh, I want to kind of draw your attention to the conversation, a very fascinating conversation that Jesus and disciples, and especially Peter, are having in Matthew chapter 16, verses 13 to 18. And uh, this conversation kind of starts with asking the questions to the disciples. And Jesus asked this question uh, in verse 13, and he says, who do people say the son of man is? And he's kind of wanting to know from, the, from everybody, who do people say the son of man is? And as this question is asked, all the disciples have the answers to the question and uh, they are they are they are kind of having this conversation, and and uh, they say, "Oh, we know." And everybody jumps in to kind of answer this question, and they say that some say that it is John the Baptist, and some say others say that it's Elijah, and still others say it is Jeremiah, and uh, and some others say one of the prophets, and and these are the. Uh, these are the answers they come up with to kind of uh, give answer. And then uh, Jesus is kind of taking in these answers and he's kind of thinks about it and processes that and, uh, you know, and thinks about it. And then uh, he has uh, another question for the disciples and it comes directly to the disciples and he says, but what about you? Uh, and he asks that, who do you say I am? And then as soon as Jesus asked this question, the disciples are kind of in a, they never expected this probably. And they're saying, oh, who do you think that I am? You know, Jesus is asking. And they're thinking and thinking and probably they're thinking that we need to answer this correctly. And they're silent. They don't have answer to that question. They don't know who Jesus is, really. And there is no answer from anybody, any of the disciples. And all of a sudden, uh, Peter just kind of answers this question. And he says this in verse 16 of this chapter. And he says, you are the Messiah, the son of living God. And as soon as Peter says that, it is a very profound thing Peter says because it relates to the identity of Jesus and this changes everything. You know, it is, mere, it is not enough merely knowing Jesus that his existence exists. It is just not enough, but it is important to know who he really is. That makes world of a difference. And I just want to kind of, uh, you know, that really makes, uh, you know, life change, um, uh, you know, information or understanding or realization in our life is what is the identity of Jesus? There are lots of people in the world, they know about Jesus and probably they think that he existed, but it is so important to know who Jesus really is. And Peter really understood that. And the response to that answer of the Peter, Jesus says these words, it's 17, uh, verse 17 and 18, and this is what he says. Jesus replied to Peter and he says, blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for this, is, for this was not revealed to you by flesh and blood, but by my Father in heaven. This is extremely important. And I tell you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not overcome it. You know, the response to this answer to, to Peter, uh, you know, uh, Peter's answer, Jesus says, man, Peter, you got it. You just got the right thing. You really understand who I am and my identity and, and uh, you know, you know, this is not the knowledge that you have acquired. You know, last uh, week we kind of talked about this. It is not because of your intellectual ability or you're something special, but this is really, God has done something deep work inside your soul and it is the revelation of God. 
It is the, God's words revelation to your, uh, to the depths of your soul that the Father in heaven has revealed to you this, this knowledge, this truth uh, about my identity that, uh, that I'm, I'm the Messiah and Son of God. And um, he says, because of that revelation, uh, this is a profound thing that has happened in you and God the Father has revealed this understanding to you and the word of God is literally revealed to you inside your soul. And that has made you a very different person. And you know, then Jesus kind of adds on and says that now because of that revelation of God's word within your soul, now you are, you know, a rock. You have become a solid person. You're a stable person. And now I can build the church on this rock, Peter. And he says that to him. And he says that and, and um, you know, the question kind of comes uh, to our mind that what is Jesus really talking about? How is Jesus going to build the church? Is he building a building? Is he building the organization? Is, it, is he a building a denomination? What is he building, really, when he, Jesus says that he's building the church? You know, friends, this is what it is. What happened with Peter was this. The word of God was revealed and really was exploded within his soul. There was something very special happened when he understood the identity of Jesus. Uh, it did something in his, in his soul. And, the, and, and it is a revealed word of God and the truth came to, uh, you know, in his heart and in his soul. You know, friends, when this happens, when the word of God is revealed to you, it makes the person mature. It reveals the truth to you. And then there is no room for that person to have offenses. You are, uh, you know, uh, the revelation of uh, God's word makes you a solid rock person and that's the reason he is referred as you know Peter became rock you know the solid person and many times we we'll, uh, we we'll listen to the uh, to the word of God you know in our life and uh, for example the preaching or we read and um, and when we do this we our first response to listening to the word of God or, or reading is our intellectual. We engage that word intellectually. And we want to, uh, you know, understand that, uh, that uh, the word of God intellectually and nothing wrong in that. We need to do that. But more, more and more our focus is intellectual understanding and, and, and uh, we don't want to miss out uh, any small details about that, what is said or what is the way it is analyzed and all that thing. And sometimes other way we engage into the word of God is emotionally. And uh, nothing wrong in that either. Uh, but, but, you know, many times we just stop there and never allow God to reveal the word of God within our depths of our soul and in our heart. When that happens, it changes our life entirely. When the word of God, you know, is revealed within our soul, it changes our life and it makes us a different person altogether. It makes us, we, we become a rock, you know. And then, then Jesus says, to, says uh, to Peter that I will build a church on this rock and nothing will be able to destroy you. You know, when we come to that place, of being a rock through the revelation of the word of God within our soul, we become solid rock people. And uh, Peter became solid rock person and that, that he was able to, you know, Jesus was able to say, I will build your church on this, on this rock. You know, friends, when we allow God to reveal his word in our soul, we become rock solid people, stable people, mature people. And God is in the business of bringing these rocks together. And he brings these rocks together one person at a time. And when you allow, allow God to reveal that word into your soul, you become a solid rock person. And he wants to bring you in. 
and you in, and another person in, and he brings all these people together, and that is how he builds the church. You know, friends, there is no church, you know, without people. There is no church without you, and God is looking for different people, every individual that they will allow God to work in their soul so that the word of God is revealed in their soul so that we become a solid rock people. And then he pulls people like every person. And, and so there is no church outside of you. Every individual people, you know, is a church. And when we come together, it is a church gathered. And that is how God is in the business of building his church. And that's the reason. I think uh, God is saying that on this solid rock, I will build my church. So friends, he is really building a church through you. And as you're alone you know, in, this, in this situation, uh, don't think that God has stopped building the church because he's doing the work within your soul, within your life. And just listen to God, focus on him, what he's revealing to your soul, in the depths of your soul, because he's making you a very solid person in these days. Isn't it amazing that, uh, you know, during that time as we're reading through scripture and we're taking this journey along with Jesus, you know, Jesus is really spending these special moments with his disciples. And so not only did Jesus ask that question, but I, I wish I was there at that time, you know, when Jesus is sitting with all his disciples at, at the Last Supper having these conversations, these deep, meaningful uh, conversations, because that's his last opportunity with them. So along with the, that question that Jesus asked uh, his disciples and Peter answered, Jesus also asked, and he made this statement to his disciples that's going to really shake up their world. You know, very many times when we work as a group, we have kind of um, that pecking order in, in a group and so this question that we see in Luke chapter 22 uh, from 21 to 22 we're going to read that really shakes up their world a little bit so let's see what what Jesus really asked them so in Luke chapter 21 uh, 22 verse 21 we read by the hand of him who is going to betray me is with me at this table the son of man will go as it has been decreed, but woe to that man who betrays him. Wow, one of the closest person to Jesus was going to betray him. So Jesus puts kind of like a little bomb amongst these uh, disciples that who is, and we know the story, but who is this disciple? And then everybody starts talking within that group and in 20, uh, verse 23 we can see that they begin to question among themselves, which of them might be who uh, this betrayer? You know, seems like the disciples um, were near, not so much concerned with that Jesus is going to be betrayed, but what was their real concern? You know, they were really concerned and interested. And you know, you can see in scripture how the conversation shifts. And in verse 24, we read, that a dispute also arose among them as to which of them was going to be considered to be the greatest. You know, so as I was talking about this pecking order, you see that Jesus is sitting there, he's having this last supper, he's breaking bread with them, he's talking to them and he really wants to, uh, he's sharing with them what his journey is going to be, what he's going to experience and what does he see? You know, he sees his disciples arguing amongst themselves. Who's going to be this, this greatest one? You know, do you think that it's this, um, there's not this deep concern for this, you know, their master or Jesus, this person whom they walked with and they, you know, they did everything with him. He's going to be leading and going to this cross, but they were so focused, so selfishly focused with an attitude that was so much filled with pride that they wanted to find out who was going to betray him so that they could start, you know, with this pecking order, they could put this person at the lowest level 
and say, who was the greatest one amongst them all? Who would be that greatest one? You know, if you were um, in Jesus's place, um, I think I, you know, I, I feel like I would have said, just leave this place, you know. You're not really concerned about what's going to happen uh, because we're going to be, you know, you all are going to be dispersed of in, this, in the future. You're not worried about the journey that I'm going to take, the journey of pain, but you're so self-centered and focusing, you know, on, um, on who's going to be the greatest one and who's not going to be that greatest one. But, you know, friends, uh, Jesus really teaches them lovingly something about servanthood as we all know what Jesus does at that time he teaches them something about servanthood but this this dispute um, that I, I really want to focus on this dispute Peter was part of this dispute that was going on and who knows we don't know exactly but maybe he started that dispute because he was the first one who spoke up and generally, uh, Peter had this dominating personality and he was right there. So let's see what it says in uh, verse 31. Uh, Jesus says, Simon, Simon, Satan has asked to sift all of you as wheat. But I have prayed for you, Simon, that your faith may not fail. And when you have turned back, you'll strengthen your brothers. Basically, that's what he's saying. So there was like a major storm coming in the life of Jesus. And it was going to test the faith of the disciples. You know, in the midst of that, what did Peter respond? Peter responded and said that, Jesus, I'm going to be there with you. I'm going to protect you. Even if it comes, even there's a time that comes that I'll be in prison for you, but I'm going to be there for you, standing by you. Um, but we all know the story how Peter denied Jesus, was scared of a little maid who recognized him and denied him. And we all see that instead of uh, standing by him confidently, we saw that and we know at that moment Peter was not yet walking, filled with that character of humility, that humility that Christ had. All this that he came like he wanted to be there for Jesus and he was going to stand for him. It was not from that, that place of humility, but it was with all that pride in his life that he was going to be there. It was that selfishness and pride. You know, friends, same is true um, when we operate in pride and when we operate in selfishness. Because that eventually, it destroys us. We all know that when we operate in pride, when we operate in selfishness, um, it destroys us. You know, we saw that that destroyed Peter. That destroyed that relationship that he had with Jesus. During that time, we have seen Peter broken down. And every perspective and everything that Jesus just told him few a uh, few kind of few minutes ago that he's going to be that rock on whom he builds his church everything just came crumbling down because uh, he had his pride had to be broken he had to learn to walk in that character you know so friends many times we get into um, you know we come to a place or God brings us to this place where he wants to break our selfishness, where he wants to break our pride. Last week we told, uh, spoke about that spiritual growth is a result of our obedience. And obedience is not, obedience is hard because at the time and place when you have to obey God, you're really, he brings you to a place of brokenness. Brokenness leads us to uh, that total obedience to God and he brings us in an uncomfortable situation or difficult situations in our lives so that we can put everything in perspective um, it's never possible you know to grow spiritually and walk in 
having that character of humility in Christ when we have when we are selfish or when we have pride so maybe you're at this place right now you know um, where you're finding that you're not in control of the situations that are around you and sometimes god brings us to that place where we just don't have any control over our current circumstance and frankly right now we don't have any control on what's happening around so we need to depend on him god did an amazing work in peter's life we know what happened as a result of that experience as a result of that brokenness as a result of peter submitting his selfish desires and his pride to god you know god really did build the church on peter he really was the rock that jesus built his church on you know friends um as we looked at uh, you know the pride and selfishness that peter acted upon and uh, you know uh, the revealed word of word of god in peter's soul what does this mean for us you know friends this is what it is jesus is in the business of building his church you know church doesn't have to be uh, always the way we think the church ought to be and we are experiencing that right now that it is a different church it is a scattered church it is a church where everybody is at a different place it is not gathered church right now and sometimes we feel that oh is the church still existing just understand and i just want to encourage you today it is always jesus says it is my church it is his church and you are the church you are the body of christ as you have scattered you are the body of christ and god is always in the business of building you up making you stronger and stronger one person at a time and this is the best time that we can strengthen ourselves depend on god and really understand what god is teaching us let the word of god be revealed in your soul as it was revealed in peter's soul and peter's life god wants to teach us many uh, valuable things during this time and as we do that we will gather one day this is this is temporary and the church will gather again and we will celebrate together it will it will be an amazing time of testimony and and uh, and really sharing with one another you know this is what god did in my life this is how god revealed his word in my life and i am a stronger person today than what i was a few months ago and god is actually doing that this is the time god is building the church and making it stronger and he wants to make you a rock one rock at a time and he will bring that rock together to make a stronger church that is his church it is not pastor church or our church but we are body of christ and it belongs to christ and the other aspect of it is you know many times we have a self confidence we act in a human confidence that leads into the pride and when we do not have a reason to depend on god we act on a self confidence that i can do this and i can take care of that and i have the knowledge of this and and peter was at that place that he wanted to save jesus and he went to fight for him and he he said i will go into prison with you and and i will die for you and all those things and all those things he was doing was in his self confidence it was he was not acting in a in a uh, in a character of jesus or in humility of jesus but it was all self there was a lot of pride and when that 
little girl asked him that, do you know Jesus? He got so fearful. He was broken down. His pride was broken down. His selfishness was broken down. And at that moment in time, he realized that how much he needs Jesus, Jesus, and it is so important to depend on him. You know, friends, maybe God is breaking our selfishness during this time. Maybe he is breaking our pride during this time. If he is doing that, he is probably teaching us dependence on him by doing that. And when he is doing that, the question is, are we allowing him to break our pride and to break our selfishness? And the, the reason he's doing is because he is in the business of building the church. He's working on you and he wants to make you a solid rock. Will you allow him to make him, make you a solid rock and bring you together to strengthen the church? Uh, this is the word of God today. And uh, let's praise God and give him thanks for who he, who he is and what he is doing in our life. Church, let's keep worshiping the Lord as uh, we go from here. Uh, as you um, are in the home, you just spend time with your family, you just make memories, and uh, always remember God is working in your life. Let His Word be revealed in your soul. Let Him work on you as maybe he is breaking your pride or breaking your selfishness. Let God do his work in your life. As we go from here, just go in confidence and be the church where you are. Let God build you up and make you a rock solid person that he can one day bring all of us together and we can be gathered church. Let's praise God and give him thanks. Let his peace and joy be with you for now and forever. Amen and amen.